Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm privileged and honored to welcome one of the tallest and most well-recognized corporate leaders from India, Mr. S. Ramadurai. So welcome to the show. Good morning. A pleasure to be here. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ramadurai is the former CEO and managing director of Tata Consultancy Services. Uh, he is the chairman of Tata Strive, which is the CSR arm of the Tata Group. He is the former chairman of the National Skill Development Agency, as well as the National Skill Development Corporation. And he was recognized and honored by the President of India with the Padma Bhushan. And uh, he was also recognized as the commander of the Order of the British Empire. So I'm so honored to have you on my show. Uh, I'd love to get started with a simple question. You took over TCS when it was a $155 million company in 1996, and you grew it to a $6 billion company in 2009, and you gave it the momentum to keep growing. What were some of your key challenges as you made TCS into such a major global software powerhouse? I think it's an excellent question. And I reflect back and see that the key challenges or key opportunities I would even add to that. One was clearly the team building, mm -hmm. the learning and development mm -hmm. proactively so that people competencies are continuously upgraded. Mm -hmm. The alignment to a complete outcome-based focus, which means you are servicing your customer and your team mm -hmm. instead of input measures. So the outcome focus was the other thing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the client focus, which I mentioned. But more importantly, to collaborate, to bring in and empower the uh, team, mm -hmm. and to bring in uh, some of the disruptive ways of looking at where the family involvement in the whole business through my wife, a program called My3. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the uh, ways you address the challenges in addition to the opportunities we saw. Mm -hmm. Clearly outcome focused, empowerment, alignment, learning and development and investment for the future. Interesting, sir. But, uh, you know, at the same time, you grew it from India into a global company. So what goes into building a global company out of India and what were some of your cultural challenges? I think very correctly, the delivery excellence was the only thing we could uh, claim to deliver. Okay. If we did not deliver on the promise which we made mm -hmm. to a client, he or she would not transact the next one with us. Mm -hmm. Second thing is the delivery excellence by a clear differentiator in terms of the technology absorption and what it takes through mm -hmm. our and development initiatives mm -hmm. to align to the customer's needs. Mm -hmm. Third is with regard to a team which delivered rather than an individual who delivered so that the focus of the customer was here is an organization which uh, meets its promises. Mm -hmm. Second, it's not a one-man organization, so I can look at multiple people. Correct. And they're willing to listen to us, to make sure that they hear us and they deliver on what we need rather than what they have. Interesting. And these were some very, very clear thing mm -hmm. because we believed in repeat business. Mm -hmm. That was the only way by delivery excellence. Mm -hmm. And a reference selling where the customers with whom we delivered excellently, they would say that why don't you go and talk to this person? That's mm -hmm. the way we organization. Mm -hmm. And what about culture, sir? I mean, you know, getting into different countries. I mean, we, of course, come from a country which has got diverse cultures. But suddenly now you're in the US, in the UK, and so many other countries. How did your leadership team manage cross cultures? Number of ways. One is uh, having uh, been educated in the US mm -hmm. and having been there as a student and then did some employment as well. Mm -hmm. He knew that is the US culture. Mm -hmm. Similarly, picking the right side of managers, right side of leaders, homegrown and who had uh, either grown up in that country or studied in that country or visited that country. Mm -hmm. So those are the ways we try to address the cultural nuances. Okay. As you begin to scale up, the cultural nuances became very, very uh, professional in development. Mm -hmm. Again, that Maitri, which I talked about, helped us in the cultural integration. So mm -hmm. when a person is going for the first time, mm -hmm. what are the kind of uh, databases, even though it may be in a paper form to start with in those years, mm -hmm. 
sharing those and preparing the people through the extended family was mm-hmm. a very very clear differentiator mm-hmm. uh so before i go further would you like to talk a, a little bit more about maitri to us yeah maitri it was a initiative mm-hmm. where my wife having seen me travel 3 weeks in a month mm-hmm. whether it was abroad or within the country so hardly had the time to spend with while we were building the company with me mm-hmm. and the children of course mm-hmm. but essentially she started a movement to say that let's bond together through the company spouses or mm-hmm. the mothers fathers who ever wanted to be yes sir example doing uh, salsa classes mm-hmm. dance classes mm-hmm. cooking classes the nuances in various parts of the world Mm. sharing that knowledge so that it became a way of life and that became a movement where uh, people found their energy and time as a common band common music because she is a music uh, musician herself mm. Mm. i think these were the things which made it possible to integrate the workforce beyond the borders or beyond the corporate as she used to call it and i guess this also gave an opportunity for the families to get to understand the pressures of work uh, in the organization for the spouses yeah. because none of the employees they were for 12 hours 15 hours 16 hours whatever amount of time mm. at the time they reached home very similar to me where they had only time to eat and then go to bed yes finally the employees and their families used to ask what are you doing really mm-hmm. we had to invite them to the organization show them what their people were doing or most of them were doing mm. it was a real bonding to say that oh my god is this what he is doing then uh, we are very proud of him so mm. employee goes to the house and says that i did this great project the client was so happy so mm. those were kind of methods we use a lot fantastic so coming back sir to uh, the it industry uh, y2k was uh, and you know i was a young uh, manager in itc in those days uh, y2k uh, seemed to have completely transitioned or changed some major companies uh, led by tcs from india uh what was that kind of a seminal moment that happened that gave this incredible push and how have the uh, tech, tech companies uh, put india on the global map i think i would say while the tech companies were uh, shaping up so in the early uh, 90s or a little earlier than that the market being abroad and not india was very clear focus that's how we started looking at the outside world yes sir the indian uh, licensing raj or the procedures the compulsory mm-hmm. nature of the contracts etc told us we had gained the experience here but the market was outside so mm-hmm. that culture was built across mm-hmm. second was the y2k was a seminal opportunity which everybody started talking about but again bring in an engineering mindset rather than just a brute force method of putting 1000 people to 1000 people or whatever it is mm-hmm. how do you bring in a level of automation which was absolutely critical mm-hmm. so that you can do a automated method of code conversion mm-hmm. to address the y2k issue and essentially we created the term what we call as a software factory very similar to the manufacturing process and that made an enormous contribution with the result mm. overflow for the whole industry to grow through mm. the effort of nascom or through the people uh, moving from one organization to another mm. was the moment which captured the market or captured the visibility for india mm-hmm. and then starting in 72 73 74 and building the brick by brick so we only say mm. tcs as part of the tata group created in terms of clearing the forest mm. and then the highway was taken over by everybody as the white uk mm. came in the mm. tailway so i think these are some of the ways we used to describe and they really paid for the industry and paid for everyone who wanted to make a mark for a dent in this marketplace you know it's so that, yeah. sorry go ahead sir go ahead immediately following that the whole internet revolution started correct and it had both a success as well as a decay because a lot of the companies disappeared during that because mm. of the hype that was created but more importantly the institutionalized form of uh, capacity building and relating to the world became mm. very you know it's so interesting you say this about clearing the way because i've often heard this the tcs was like the bulldozer which was going and clearing the path uh, in all the difficult markets 
and all the others are following. Thank you. Very nice to hear it from you, sir. Uh, and the proud moment when they started the Chinese operations or the Latin American operations great. and creating those beachheads mm. was an enormous amount of uh, both uh, appetite, risk taking, passion, and can do it. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So, uh, one of the things that uh, the software business or industry from India has often been asked is that why are we not being able to produce global software products? I'm beginning to see products coming out, but what is what, according to you, sir, is the reason why we don't have a Microsoft or an Adobe or whichever other product out of India? Well, there are two reasons or two or three reasons primarily. Sir. Because, like I said, the whole market was in the outside the borders of India, mm. more importantly, in the developed countries. Yes, sir. Only way we all could relate to the market was through services. Mm -hmm. That's why services took the mainstream rather than products, because you cannot market a product from here. And the cost of marketing a product in the US or in Europe would be prohibitively expensive. Correct. So services was the route we took and the capability building to under the services market, which is emerging, was extremely mm -hmm. critical. Mm -hmm. As part of that, most of the organization or quite a few of us created the intellectual property or uh, the patents which we created. And the combination was that was to ease of developing the software through the intellectual property or repeat business where we would compress the time frames. Mm -hmm. Example, if you took a project like the CDSL, the uh, NSDL, which is the deposit part of this country, mm -hmm or the stock exchange where we created the national stock exchange, the assets we learned from doing the Swiss stock exchange or the US or any other part of the world, mm -hmm. we were able to compress the time from three years to nine months as an mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. So those the way the product market emerged in terms of the services to the asset uh, intensity and the asset uh, being a part of the very, very process itself. Right. Mm -hmm. Now we have got a situation where anything manufactured in India through the platforms and through a digital connect through any part of the world, anybody, mm -hmm. the market opportunity with the result, the products will see it's daylight. Mm -hmm. So whether an operating system from this country mm -hmm. or a chipset being uh, designed in this country but manufactured through a foundry somewhere else, mm -hmm. the global supply chain is playing out very, very effectively. Mm. That's why you see the fintech, the health techs, the edutex, the kills, et cetera, et cetera, mm. where delivery can happen from anywhere, brand can be publicized from anywhere. Right. The product market is a global market and people will accept that. And so cultural shift has also taken place mm. during 30, 40 years. Fascinating. And so TCS is, you know, I've watched it from the outside a lot. Uh, TCS is an amazing organization where it was a large company which was scaling up and yet it was entrepreneurial as in your own words as you were opening up several more beachheads so you needed a team of leaders who were entrepreneurs and you were needed a team of leaders who were experts in scaling up so i wanted to ask you what do leaders need to be mindful of in relation to people and such competencies i think people must as leaders must know how to share things which mm -hmm. means empower the others mm -hmm. You cannot be a command and control where you're only looking for faults from the person and saying that I can, I'm the only person who can do it. Yes, sir. Leadership calls for empowerment and trusting irrespective of success or a failure. Mm. Leadership also has taught me that when it is a success, pass on the success to others and it's a failure, the buck stops with you. Mm -hmm. And there will always be both pluses and minuses in the overall scheme of things. We have been given a position and a responsibility mm. You must keep these, and that's a professional conduct. It's not whether I do it. Because mm -hmm. one of the we always used to propagate was to become members of professional bodies like IT, Computer mm -hmm. Society of India. Mm -hmm. Because you, as a professional, have a uh, responsibility to share the knowledge and educate or impact others through your wisdom or through your knowledge or through your learnings. Mm -hmm. That kind of a culture is what we have been propagating, and in the industry has been encouraging. Mm. more and more and more. And that's absolutely critical for any scale-up and any uh, leadership development and a leader remembering and keeping themselves all the time. Mm. Put has to be on the ground. My focus has to be on the customer and my employee. So mm. long as I practice that and empower the people, mm -hmm. growth will automatically come. And it's a sustained growth. Don't look for one quarter. Correct. Correct. Well said, sir. So, sir, now moving on, uh, I've come to 
the, the pandemic and the work from home that has impacted everybody. Uh, I'd love to get a perspective from you that if you were to build a team in current circumstances that the world finds itself in, what would you look for people to bring on board? No, you're absolutely right in asking this question. And the way I've always practiced is by doing. Sir. What do you mean by doing? Mm -hmm. I'm beginning to invest in some of the startup companies. Okay. And whether in the social sector or in the for-profit sector, mm -hmm. And mentoring and then uh, being a part of those um, capacity is to encourage people to look for the following. Mm. Either you look for the technical competency mm. or you look for what you don't have and what you need to get. Third is collaboration, collaboration, and collaboration. Yes, sir. And measurement through a set of benchmarks for yourself as well as the people you are working with. Mm. And the earliest you can find a time to connect with as the COVID situation keeps on waxing and waning, mm -hmm. that builds the culture and that builds the momentum. Mm. If a set of people, irrespective of the age, professionally connect together through any medium, whether it's physical medium or a digital medium, I think people will start uh, looking at the problem rather than finding fault with something. Mm -hmm. I think that's beginning to happen, but it is quite a challenge because you are dealing with people whom you have never met in some situations if mm. they are new. But I think always find a way to connect and you find a way to improvise. Mm -hmm. So collective learning where age or hierarchy has no role, mm -hmm. but all of us learn together and that's the change. And in a digital medium, mm -hmm. what you know, I can uh, ask for it. What I know, I can deliver on the platform. Mm -hmm. Both of us benefit in that. That's the realization that has come. Mm -hmm. and people are becoming more and more comfortable mm -hmm. To the point of saying that the work from home is going to be a way of life. Correct. But it may be probably hybrid where you will spend a few days in the office and mm. spend time at the uh, work from home, etc. Mm. Mm. Uh, my next question to you, sir, is, uh, you know, this year alone, India has got 31 unicorns and all of them in technology or using technology as a base. Uh, you have built highly profitable technology companies, you know, my question to you is, and I was talking to a couple of founders of some unicorns and I asked them a question. I said, uh, how do you get such incredible valuations uh, and keep losing such large sums of money? And the comment I got was that I, you need special skills to lose money and increase valuation. I would love to get your perspective, sir, on how important are profits for an ongoing business or is it just valuation? No, I think the most important thing is profits on a sustained basis, the first key. Yes, sir. You understand that. Mm -hmm. Do not look for today's profit, tomorrow losses, the after of profits and the valuations, whether it's by the VC firms or by the market, is completely a false notion. Mm -hmm. To me, if you create cash flows, you create a sustained operation of profits on a year-on-year, -year, quarter on quarter basis. Mm -hmm then the fundamentals must be very right for scale up. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, don't over promise and under deliver. You would rather promise less and deliver more. Mm -hmm. And valuations must reflect that. It's by mm -hmm. personal experience where when we went for a IPO in 2004, mm -hmm. so the same thing, we could have commanded a lot more than what we started with mm -hmm. in terms of the IPO pricing. Yes, sir. The market mm -hmm. wanted more or people wanted more or investors mm -hmm. wanted less or whatever it is. Finally, we priced it. Mm -hmm. History tells us that a sustained cash flow rewards you and people trust you and people mm. stay with you. Mm. So just checking yesterday, the number of retail uh, shareholders in a company like TCS today is 17 lakhs. Wow. Which is an amazing way to say that mm. over a period of time, mm. you can create the wealth for others. People will trust you. People will see the rewards returns for trusting you mm. with the in your company. So I think uh, to every founder today, that's what when I meant, uh, keep your feet on the ground, build a team, but a sustained cash flow as quickly as possible to profitability and mm. keeping it on is the only way. If your product is right, your technology is right, and your team is right, then automatically the business will come. I mean, the valuations are scary at times today, and valuations by somebody else is no measure of your success. Mm. Till such time, the cash flows are guaranteed. Very well said, sir. So one more question on TCS before I move to the Anvesha Trust, sir. Uh, 
it's traditionally been said that when a company becomes very large, uh, younger companies are much more nimble and they're able to move much faster. My question to you, sir, is what do traditional large companies need to do to adapt to market dynamics? I think traditional companies should not benchmark with the largest set of companies in their uh, ecosystem. Mm -hmm. If I had a benchmark, if I was running a company like uh, TCS, mm -hmm. I would look at which are the startups which have got that kind of a capability to run faster than us. Mm -hmm. They're running faster than us. One of the lessons I learned is to get the teams mm -hmm. which are smaller in size. Yes, sir. And uh, delivery, which is not uh, on a yearly basis, but mm. every day basis or every 10 days basis or every 15 days basis. Mm. The nimbleness, the empowerment and the focus, single-minded focus on the area of operations you are involved in. Mm. That's the only way the larger companies can see a global competition rather than the big companies in their backyard. Mm. So the way I would look at it. Mm. And the, uh, in some companies, they may go and split the company and then uh, divest or IPO it or do whatever it is through the mm -hmm. private route. All these models are available even when you acquire a smaller company because of the technology. Mm -hmm. My advice would be for the larger companies, leave it alone, let it mushroom, let it grow, and then you adopt it rather than do the big brother attitude to say that I know everything. That's the mm -hmm. doom mm -hmm. scenario. Wonderful. So I've got to ask you one more question, and I'm sure you've been asked this recently by a lot of people. As such a senior tech leader yourself, in the US, uh, virtually all the major tech companies are being led by Indians, and I'm sure a lot of them would have worked for TCS at some stage or the other. What makes Indians such great CEOs of such large, large companies? I think a few things. One is their depth and the technical competency mm -hmm. to be current is very, very visible. Mm -hmm. They are not claiming credit purely based on the basis of a brand, but rather than a brand built through excellence and delivery. Mm -hmm. Second is they have been a collaborative mindset where they see the value and the uh, ability to build the competency in their uh, teams. Mm -hmm. Innovation, learnings, collective responsibility, and uh, keeping your feet on the ground in terms of the humility are some of the factors which have led Indians to where they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, almost every single person, irrespective of the technology sector, they are all technically one of the soundest people. Correct. And the IIT systems or the IIM systems or the Indian Institute of Science, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And even now, the British Pilani, the regional colleges are all propagating that kind of a Correct. point. Mm -hmm. And people believe that uh, we are in the mainstream now and we can be uh, a responsibility which is beyond what we imagined. Amazing, sir. So I'm now going to move to the Anvesha Trust, sir. Uh, you set this up with your wife. Uh, tell me a little bit about the trust, sir, and your motivation to start it. The motivation to start was as we are coming closer to the retirement. Mm -hmm. The impact should not be measured only by the money you make or the cash flows you generate for the organization or right. the share. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We were both deliberating because we come from two different uh, domains. Mm -hmm. I come from a science and engineering. She comes from a liberal arts background. Mm -hmm. Music, art, mm -hmm. uh, history, those are our passions. Mm -hmm. So when they said that, what is the kind of social impact we can create at scale level was the thought process behind forming the Anvesha Trust. Mm -hmm. Second was, what are the areas we should address was with regard to health, with regard to education, mm -hmm. skills, environment, and the fine arts. Mm -hmm. So we decided that if we had to create impact through a collaboration where we'll partner with a number of NGOs, mm -hmm. And uh, create the forum or a platform, Anvesha Trust was one of the experiments which succeeded. Mm. Second one also motivated us or we built a children's hospital through public funding in a city like Mumbai. Mm -hmm. All the uh, SRCC, Society for Rehabilitation of Crippled Children. Right. Where it's a fully functioning uh, hospital in the pediatric care, mm -hmm. a specialized one. So these were which led to us formation of the uh, Anvesha Trust. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to say that we have touched a number of people who need it, who need it in terms of the physical presence and the ability to fund them in uh, small ways. Mm -hmm. 
But I think it's a very satisfying because then I'm part of multiple institutions today in the mm-hmm. non-profit sector, whether it's the Public Health Foundation of India, Tata mm-hmm. Institute of Social Sciences, mm-hmm. that's the British Asian Trust, the Nature Conservancy, etc., mm-hmm. etc. Mm-hmm. The impact you create, or the Access Bank Foundation, the impact you create is multiple. Correct. Which gives the empowerment for people to stand up on their own legs. Mm-hmm. And today it's a world where technology and digital makes it... Um, Anybody can make anything. Mm. Anybody can be aspiring any position. Mm. And if uh, cricket, we have seen what has progressed in the country, instead of only a Mumbai or a Delhi, mm. today, most of the people, kids are all from the interior parts of the country. Correct. So the things which Correct. make us very, very a satisfying life. Like you yourself said, mm. the age of 65, are doing completely different things. <laughs> yes. Same thing we are doing is completely dif- uh, different, right. but in a very collaborative mode between me and my wife. Mm. So it's a lot more involvement of both of us together, and we know each other so well. Mm. Uh, we are nearing 50 years of our uh, marriage next year. Congratulations, sir. So, mm. Thank you. And that makes all the difference to say that we are creating that impact collectively. Wonderful. Sir, on that note, uh, thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me about your incredible journey with TCS and for sharing with me such amazing thoughts. I mean, I, I have learned so many new things about management, about you and about TCS. And thank you for all the great work that you're doing through Anvesha Trust. Good luck, sir. Thank you so much. And um, we are proud of what we are doing. And I will also thank uh, the Tata Group. And every sen- uh, single mentor, whether it is the parents, whether it is any of the other people who touched our lives, mm. which uh, we have to give it back multiple times, which in true spirit of Tata's is what comes back to you must go to the people. Well said. Much- so thank you so much for thank you. the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.